Hey guys, Perkler. In this video, we're going to be talking about exposing your home lab to the internet and whether you should or not. This will not go into more advanced solutions, but it's a good place to start. I am no security expert and I do not claim to be one. This video is intended to get you going in the right direction, not to be a perfect solution. This is just to get you thinking about your network security as well as your home lab security. The first two options I'd have to admit are a bit of a cop out, but are legitimate answers. The first is to just not expose your home lab to the outside world. This is the best in terms of security, as with only local access to the services, it's pretty hard for your data to be obtained or your lab to expose. This is pretty easy to implement as well, as you just spin up the service and away you go. The second is to host any service that you want to be accessible from outside of your home on a VPS like Linode or DigitalOcean. This way, the service is accessible but separate from your home network. The worst case, if you really script the security of the server, is that the data of the service is lost or exposed. This method can also be used with other options like the next one I'm going to be talking about. The next way is to set up a VPN, whether it's WireGuard, OpenVPN, or some other VPN solution. This is my personal solution. I only need a few select people to have access to my services, so this is a great solution for me. I personally use WireGuard on OpenSense, and it works great. This solution can give access to the entire network, and it's great for managing your home lab while you're away. A VPN solution is a must for home lab with services exposed. It also makes for a great backup if some other solution goes down and pairs well with other solutions. In today's video, I'm going to be showing a simple solution using Telscale and Docker. I am going this route because Telscale offers easy entry into VPN without a lot of headache. I used this for a while before I had WireGuard on OpenSense in my personal setup and had debated on moving back for the last few months. It is a paid service, but the free tier offers 100 connections for Home Lab and is plenty in most cases. The first step in order to get started with Telscale is to sign up for an account. Once you've done this, you'll be presented with a screen asking you to go ahead and download and set up Telscale. That's a great place to start. In my case, since I've already skipped that screen, I'm just presented with a get started screen. This should look very similar to the screen that you are presented with though, and it should be the same steps. The install in one command option is very good for installing on to Linux. And for our case, we're gonna be using it to install to Ubuntu. The manual install is a little bit more advanced, but you may need this for certain situations. So once we've copied that command, we're going to go ahead and head over to our VM. In my case, I've set up a VM just for Telscale, but you can also use another VM or you can just set this up on the VM that we had already set up previously. But in my case, since I'm not keeping this around, I'm just setting this up on a separate VM. Once here, you can go ahead and paste in the command. After you've pasted in, you can go ahead and press enter in order to run it. It'll ask for your pseudo password. And in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. After a little while, you presented with the screen such as this that says, would you like to restart your services? I am seeming to have a little bit of an issue. Uh, I don't know if this is a VM issue or what, but this is not allowing me to tab down in order to uh, select okay down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, quit the service. And then I'm gonna go ahead and relaunch into it. I'm going to go ahead and SSH back into the server. Once here, I'm going to run that command again, enter my password again, and then it doesn't seem to pop up the uh, restart services and it just says installation complete, log in using Telscale by running next command. From here, we can go ahead and run the sudo Telscale up command. Once that's run, we should get a thing saying to authenticate visit telscale.com. Once that is clicked, we will be presented with a thing saying to connect device and it'll give us our device details if we need them down here. In our case, we know that this is the right machine, so we're gonna go ahead and press connect. Uh, you'll be presented with a login, and in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click this and click this and then press connect. Now we should be logged in successfully. We can head back over to our Telsco and down here we'll get a message that says, yes, this was successful. Now that our machine is connected through Telscale, all we need to do is head over to these three little dots, go to edit route settings. In here, we can go ahead and click learn more under subnet routes. This is a how-to guide of go ahead and setting it up so that, our, uh, so that we can set up a subnet router. This is so that this machine can allow us to connect to other services on our network that are around it. So in our case, we've already set, done step one and our second, we're going to go ahead and connect Telscale as a subnet router. In order to do this, all we need to do is copy this command in our case, since we're using Ubuntu, head back over to our machine, paste it in, and press OK. Now that we have that set up, 
we should have this machine set up as a subnet router. There are some other options here that you may need to use on other distros, such as a uh, firewall CMD in order to permit uh, firewall to your connection via your firewall. After this, we need to go ahead and set up to advertise our subnet routes. And in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and copy this command. In my case, this command is exactly what I need because uh, it uses both of the subnets that I'm using currently. If you need to change these, all you need to do is change these to the, your correct subnets. After you've pressed that and entered that, we should be able to go to uh, step three, which is going ahead and enabling the subnet routes from the admin console. In order to do this, we head back over to our machines tab and we can go ahead and turn on both of these. Now, once you've done that, you'll get a message saying this machine's keys expire. Your relay traffic may be interrupted until you re-authenticate. In order to stop this from happening, we go ahead and click the blue word that says keys expires. And we can read about how our keys expires and what this exactly means. But in order to fix it, we're just going to go ahead and hit exit and then go to our three dots and hit disable key expiry. Now that we've done that, we can go back to the three dots and go to edit routing router settings and that mission is, is gone. There is one more step that you may want to do, and this is kind of completely up to you. And that is to go ahead and set up it as an exit node. In order to do this, we can go ahead and hit the exit node. And as you can see, it won't let us click this. Well, that's because we need to do some setup. In order to do this, we go ahead and click the learn more button. And once again, as Telscale generally provides very good documentation, you can just follow along with this. We're gonna go ahead and down to step one, and we've already done this. And in step two, we've already done most of this. However, there's a little bit of a change. We need to go ahead and do uh, advertise exit node. Now, in order to do this, we can go ahead and head over to our SSH. Once we're here, we can go ahead and go up to sudo telescale up attack advertise exit node and you'll get an error. Now, in order to do this error on screen, it provides the command that you need to do. Copy this command and go ahead and paste it in. Once this is done, you can go ahead and press enter and uh, you may have to run this as root so in this case, we'll go ahead and do a shortcut, sudo bang bang, and now it is running that command. Now it should be advertised as an exit node. Head back over to our web browser and we should be able to click this button now. Now we can use this node as an exit node. So now all of our internet traffic can be sent through this telescope node. In order to set up the exit node, you also need to configure the client to use uh, the node that we just set up as our exit node. The instructions can be found under step four for Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, and Windows. And I'd recommend just following these instructions as making a video that covers each one of these devices would be quite long and uh, a bit annoying to do. Now I'm gonna show some footage of me signing in on my phone. Once we've signed in, we can go ahead and uh, check to make sure it's active up in the top. Uh, left corner it'll say active from here we're gonna go ahead and go over to Vivaldi inside of Vivaldi I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the IP address for one of my servers from here it should take a few seconds and we should go ahead and load I believe Megatron now that you can see the Proxmox is loaded we know we can connect to machines and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I can also connect to machines using uh, the DNS that we had set up previously so I'm gonna go ahead and type in Megatron dot Percolator dot duck DNS. Once I've done this, it will go ahead and reload the page. As you can see the little bar loading above where it says Proxmox and it'll reload back to Proxmox since this is the same machine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a different site as in our proxy site so that you can go ahead and see that we have access to it. And as you can see, Nginx Proxy Manager has loaded. From here, you can see under internet settings that I am not connected to my Wi-Fi and I've only connected to my mobile data. Another way to expose services is to use something like Cloudflare tunnels. Tunnels are excellent for exposing services, but are not a silver bullet. They have some pretty big privacy concerns. I would like for you to check out the video in the card or link below if you'd like more information on why I do not personally use tunnels, as well as more on the privacy issues that tunnels have. Christian has made a great video about it already and does a much better job explaining it than my editing skills would ever allow. There are other solutions out there, things like HAProxy, Cloudflare, and Reverse Proxy Solutions. I have not personally used these for extended periods of time, and so do not feel comfortable recommending them to someone new to HomeLab. 
And since these videos are intended for new to home lab crowd, I don't want to get someone in trouble by recommending a solution I've not personally used for at least a few years. There are many ways to expose your home lab, but I would question if you really should. Most things I host are just for me and managing a VPN for others that need access to my home lab is not much work and seems like the most secure way of giving access. When I first got started in home lab, I really wanted to host all kinds of resources publicly. So I understand it feels like you may need to host all of your services on the web. But I can assure you, it is in best interest for you to wait until you have a great understanding of networking and put some serious thought into your security of your home lab. After all, one of the biggest reasons to host your own service is for privacy and taking these steps to expose your home lab too early can result in quite a bit of privacy loss as well as data loss. That'll be all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps keep the channel growing as well as keeps me motivated to make more videos like this in the future.